Uh, my name is Donald Kirkley, K-I-R-K-L-E-Y, <clears throat> and I'm one of those additional people that Harry mentioned who was hired uh, after Graham and Harry had laid the foundation for the college. I arrived uh, in the fall of 1962, uh, which was a very important year in the college's growth because it was the first year that we actually met during both the day and the evening hours. And in fact, our first semester, and you both will remember this, we met in an elementary school in uh, the Westview area of Baltimore County. Uh, while they were getting the, the campus, as primitive as it was, on the old state, Rolling Road, which became, of course, and still is the, uh, the, the seat of Catonsville Community College. And so we were all delighted when the time came to actually move in to our building. The faculty, appropriately enough, I always thought, were put in rooms on the top floor, the fourth floor of the building, which had previously been servants' quarters. And we all <laughs> thought that that made perfectly good sense for us. People like Graham, who was an administrator, uh, managed to get a slightly bigger uh, office than the rest of us poor peons had. Uh, my job was to teach uh, speech and English, and when I was hired, I was just fresh out of a master's program in College Park, University of Maryland. And so I taught speech and I taught English and basic English lit, and I, in my second year, my second and final year, I introduced a course in introduction to radio, television, film. I stayed a number of buildings that we had when we moved in in the end, I guess the end of 62. I recall that apart from the maintenance building and the mansion house that served as our classroom, their offices, served as virtually everything. The only other building that I remember was our library, which was a, a remade, or a made over, I guess would be the term, chicken house. Because <laughs> uh, Florence Wilmer was the librarian then, I remember. And I always thought that I could detect uh, the, the odor of, of chickens past. Because <laughs> when I was growing up, we had a chicken house of our own. And I Perhaps it was my imagination, but I, I've never forgotten that chicken house cum library. I'd, but I think one thing that uh, was remarkable to me, I, I brought with me a, a yearbook, and uh, this was from the first year that we actually had a campus, and this would reflect the 1963 graduating class. Uh, what's impressive to me is the thinness, if you, the camera can pick that up, it's, uh, it's tiny. And there were only 28 graduates that year. Harry mentioned earlier that in the first graduation that he presided over, uh, there was only one now, graduate. I wasn't, excuse me. I wasn't there then, but I was there when there were only six. When there were only six. But uh, this was 28 people, and this is when we were going, quote, full steam. But I do recall that the following year, the 63-64 the year, uh, our classes seemed to start to fill up. We had very reasonable class sizes, but I think most of us had full classes, full loads, mm -hmm. day and night. And we've mentioned before, but a lot of the returning population that, that you've mentioned from uh, the older folks that came in from the police department and on the GI Bill, a lot of those people had to have jobs, and many of them were in our night classes. And our night classes were, were filled to the brim.